Good morning. Welcome to Pathway Global Methodist Church. And my name is Judy Thompson. I'm your worship greeter this morning. And I have a scripture for you. It's James 1, verses 2 and 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. I welcome you this morning and thank you for joining us here at Pathway Global Methodist Church. Whether you are in the sanctuary or online, please be blessed by our service today. Our first hymn is Easter People Raise Your Voices. It's on page 304. We're going to sing verses 1 through 3. Please stand if you are willing and able. Thank you for that fine singing this morning. Now please join me in the Apostles' Creed ecumenical version. It's on page 882, or you may follow along on the screens in front of you. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory. You may be seated. 
Well, good morning, church. I'm Pastor Dan, the senior pastor here, and I am thrilled you have chosen to worship with us today. I think you are going to be blessed. We have Jim Krause on the organ and Gabriel on the piano, and they both do a phenomenal job, and I'm excited to be worshiping the Lord with you today. At this time, I'm going to ask Jim Krause if he'll come this way. Oh, we'll do it. A, do you want to do it after the video announcements? Okay, all right. I'm going to say a few, I'm going to give a couple other announcements, and I'm going to have Jim Krause come this way. Um, uh, real quick, if we're trying to get a crew to help work on the church grounds, so if you are willing to help pull weeds, trim bushes, and all that kind of stuff, there's a sign-up sheet by the Opportunities Desk. We hope you'll sign up for that. Also, we did a funeral here yesterday and realized there's a lot of people's stuff in the kitchen, you know, people donating, you know, food and stuff like that, and they're, so anyway, if you have a pan, if you're missing a pan, it might be in our kitchen there, and we encourage you to check it out um, and grab the ones that are yours, and Jim, Jim's going to be retiring here at the end of, of, of June, um, and I have had the privilege of working with you for 30 years. You've been here 31, you know, when you retire, it'll be 31 years, and I just want to say thank you for ministering and faithfully serving the Lord here for so many years. You've been an absolute gem and a joy to work with, and I want to give you a chance. If you want to say anything to the congregation, I know you probably didn't prepare for that, but if you want to say anything, you can. Um, I will let you know we are going to be doing a retirement party for Jim on the first Sunday in June. I think it's June 2nd, uh, after the 11 o'clock service. You're all invited back here for a meal and a time of sharing and a time to thank Jim and to share any memories you have. And um, So we will be doing a retirement party then for Jim. Um, but I wanted you to know that Jim will be retiring here, and we are in the process of finding someone to fill that spot. It's not going to be easy, and, uh, but um, I wanted the church to know. And Jim, if you want to say anything, you can. <laughs> if you don't, that <laughs> Since I have a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> um, I look back at Ann. Ann was one of the first people I met when I came to this church 30, in August 31 years ago. And um, as I think back over these years, it's amazing that there's one or two people still in the choir who sang with me and have done the music program. But to go through this life of the church with the so many people over these years, it's been a real blessing to me. And you've been generous to me in giving me opportunities to serve you and to work with me with you. Um, I had another organist friend years ago say, one of the things that music, we use music to help celebrate and go through different experiences of life. So I've been able to celebrate births with you and deaths with you and weddings with you and then just worshiping God every week and it's been a blessing to me. So um, I'm not completely, I'm not gone yet <laughs> and we'll be around some. So I hope to still um, be around to be helpful. So thank you all for the blessings you've and can I just say, Jim, yes. yes. <laughs> and Jim, you've been a blessing to this church, and so has Lori and your kids. And we, uh, we love you, and we hope you know that, and we hope you've experienced that over the 31 years here. So at this time, I want to encourage you to pay attention to the screens. We're going to watch the video announcements, and I'm going to encourage you to get involved with the ministries and the missions that are going on here. Uh, we want to continue to grow the church and be a blessing to the world. So uh, pay attention to the screens. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Thank you so much for worshiping with us here at Pathway, where we journey together in faith. We are so glad that you're with us. If it's your first time worshiping with us, we have something called a connection card found in the pew back in front of you or on our website. Fill one of those out. That's for us to stay connected with you and get you plugged in where you are called to. If you or a loved one is in need of prayer, we also have prayer cards in front of you or online. This is for anyone at any time. Fill one of those out, drop it in the offering plate. The staff prays over you guys every single week. We just have a few announcements before we get started. Coming up next Sunday at our nine o'clock service, we're gonna be doing excerpts from The Good Shepherd. We're gonna have a decent sized orchestra here and just some amazing music. So if that's something that 
sounds like it appealed to you or somebody you know, please be inviting them to this service. And we hope to see a lot of you there. Thank you so much to everyone who already filled out our contact information form. We have gotten so many responses and that just makes us so happy. If you haven't already filled out this form, it should have been sent to your email, but we actually sent it out again in case you accidentally deleted it or it went to your spam or just as a reminder. But this is a Google form um, where you're just updating all of your contact information like your name, address, email. And this is just for our office, just for admin purposes only. We're using this so we can make sure we're getting all of the information to you guys that you want and need. And we're just going through our system and cleaning it up, making sure everything is correct. So again, please, please, please fill out that form. It should be in your email from the Pathway office. Or we have physical forms found at the welcome desk in the lobby with a box. If you're going to fill out a physical form, please make sure you fill out every single question. If not, it kind of defeats the purpose of the form. So again, please fill these out and thank you so much, guys. On Friday, May 10th, we are going to be having a nurse night here at the church geared toward, toward our young adults. Uh, we are asking everybody to bring $5 to help cover the cost of pizza and other supplies. But it should be a good time just going around and having some good old-fashioned Nerf fun uh, all over the church. Uh, so if that sounds like something you or a friend might be interested in, reach out to Pastor Dan for more information. Starting next month, we're doing a fundraiser, and it's a shoe drive. And what this looks like is we're going to have a box, and you can bring in any type of shoe, whether it's a boot, sneakers, you can even bring cleats in, you can bring heels, flats, any type of shoes. They just need to be gently worn, not destroyed or anything like that, but something you would buy at a thrift store or something like that. And we're going to collect those shoes. We're going to bag them and prepare them accordingly, and we're going to have them shipped off and this organization that we're working through will give us money back for those shoes, and they're going to give those shoes to people in need. This is an awesome fundraiser that's just a win all around. People who are in need get shoes, and we get money for donating shoes. So if you have any questions about this, just contact me. But for the next couple of weeks, start hoarding up all of your shoes that you want to get rid of, and we can't wait to start this fundraiser with you guys. Okay, friends. I am excited for this one. It is getting to be that time of year, and we are formally announcing our summer kids camp theme. This year's theme is going to be scuba. It's an underwater theme. The dates for it are July 21st through the 26th. We're going to be doing the same thing we did last year, doing it Sunday through Thursday with a party on Friday. If you have kids that you would like to register pre-K through fifth grade, registration for that is going to be live now. Uh, also, if you want to help with that, I know I can find a spot for you to get plugged in, so please talk to me. Uh, we'd love to get as many people on board with this as possible. This is one of our biggest uh, education and outreach things we do, especially for our kids in our community. So we want many, many hands to be involved in this, whether it's in person or in prayer. So if you have any questions, reach out to me, and it's going to be a great time. Let us continue to worship the Lord <laughs> by turning our hymnals to page 297. We're going to sing verses 1 through 3, or you can follow along with the words on the screen. But we'll be singing Beneath the Cross.
you bow your heads and let us pray. Father God, we are grateful that you gave us another day. Another day to gather with our brothers and sisters in Christ to worship and praise your holy name. And I pray, God, that as we worship you today, that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon this place. Fill all of us here with your presence, your power, your goodness, your grace, your wisdom. Come extra close to those who may be mourning or grieving. Bring joy to those who the world is trying to depress and, and bring peace to those that the world is fr that, that we're, they're just dealing with frustrations and, and many problems. And God, I pray that as we worship you today, that our worship would be pleasing in your sight, that it would bring a smile to your face and joy to your heart. That as we worship you, you would speak to our hearts and transform us more into the image of your son, Jesus Christ. May we rise up from this place and, and as we go, may we leave refreshed and renewed and ready to live the Christian life you've called us to. Ready to share the good news of Jesus Christ with the world. Ready to live the victorious Christian life you've called all of us to. And God, I pray today that you would be blessing this church. Help us to fill the pews on Sunday mornings with worshipers. Bless the small group ministries, the music ministries, the youth and children's ministries, the adult ministries. Bless it all, God. We want to reach as many people for Jesus Christ as we can. We want to be as big of a blessing to this community and to your world as we can. So God, I pray your blessing upon each person here and upon the ministries and missions that go on at this church. And God, I'm aware that there are people that are struggling. As the cost of food and gas and everything goes up, there are many people struggling financially. There are others that are struggling in their faith. There are others that are struggling in relationships. There are other people that are running into problems at work and conflicts in life. And we just pray, God, that you would come into all of these situations. Bring your strength, bring healing, bring reconciliation and love and understanding. Bring peace to people's hearts and minds. And God, today we want to thank you. We want to thank you for your love and thank you that you loved us so much that you sent us your son, Jesus Christ. Jesus, we thank you for teaching us the ways of God, for performing many signs and wonders and miracles. And eventually, you went to the cross and you died for us. Thank you for loving us so much that you would be willing to lay down your life for us. That you'd be willing to endure all the pain and suffering that took place to all the things that led up to the cross and then to dying on the cross. We thank you not only just for your love and for dying for us on the cross, but thank you for having the power to rise back to life. The source of all life could not be held down by death. And, and we celebrate that. And we are grateful and thankful that we follow a risen Lord. A Savior who will live forevermore. And God, I pray that you would, as our risen Lord, as our King, as our Judge, as our friend, that you would lead us and guide us down the path of right living. Help us to live lives that are pleasing in your sight. Use us to do as much good as we can, for as many as we can, for as long as we can, while we are here on this earth. And when we die and go to be with you, may you, re may you reward us for the good things that we did and said while we are here on this earth, for your kingdom and for your glory. God, we love you and thank you for the many ways you've blessed us. Thank you for the gift of life, the gift of family, the gift of friends, the gift of salvation, the gift of adoption in your family, the gift of eternal life with you someday in heaven. Thank you for all of that. And today we also thank you for the gift of prayer and for teaching your followers how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. Now enjoy this special music piece sung by our chancel choir. Thank you, choir, for blessing us with that beautiful song. I've always loved that song, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Well, last Sunday we began our sermon series on the book of Jonah. We looked at that first chapter of Jonah where God called the prophet to go to Nineveh to tell them that God was going to destroy them for their wickedness. But Jonah refuses to go to Nineveh. Probably because he didn't really care for the, for the Assyrian people. They were the enemies of Israel. He'd probably been happy to see their capital city get destroyed. Probably didn't care about them much, didn't love them much, didn't want to take the, God's message to them. He probably also saw this maybe as a death sentence because he was afraid that if he went there and said, Hey, the God of the Hebrews is going to destroy you in 40 days for your wickedness. They might have killed him. So instead of going to Nineveh and preaching the message that God wanted him to preach, he goes to the port city of Joppa and hops on a boat for Tarshish, heading in the opposite direction of Nineveh. 
Well, God is not happy with Jonah's disobedience, so he sends a huge storm, and everyone on the boat is terrified, and they all think they're going to die. They begin to cast valuable cargo overboard to lighten the ship, to keep it from taking on water. They try and row back to shore, and they don't get anywhere, and eventually they cast lots to see who angered the gods. And the lot falls on Jonah. And then Jonah shares with him and tells him he's running away from his God. And, and the people cry out, cry out, why are you, why did you do this? And all this stuff. And, and they said, what must we do to uh, appease your God? And Jonah says, throw me overboard and the storm will stop. And if you remember, the people didn't want to throw him overboard. They didn't want to be responsible for his death. So they get behind the oars again and they start paddling and paddling, trying to get back to shore. And once again, it is useless. So then they pray out to, to Jonah's God and ask him not to hold them accountable, and they end up throwing Jonah overboard. And immediately the storm stops, the people on the boat are saved. And in order to save Jonah, God sends a big fish and, and has a big fish swallow Jonah. Today I'd like to actually begin my message by trying to answer two big questions that come up frequently when you read the story of Jonah. Hold off on that real quick. <laughs> the first question is, was Jonah swallowed by a big fish, a whale, or a sea creature? And we're all going to have different, yeah, people are going to say different things. <laughs> well, Jonah 117 uses the Hebrew word dog gadol. Dog means fish, and gadol means great or large. So in Hebrew, it says Jonah was swallowed by a large fish, or a great fish. However, I need to point out that in ancient Hebrew language, the ancient Hebrew language has no word for whale. So they would describe a whale as a large or giant fish. Plus, they probably didn't know that whales were mammals. And, you know, we know them that, that they're in mammals, but back in that day, we would see a whale and they'd think it's just a giant fish. So it could have been a whale, or it could be a large fish. When the Old Testament scriptures was, were translated from Hebrew to Greek in the Bible, it's known as the Septuagint. They could have used the Greek word ichthus for fish, or they could have used the Greek word phalanea, which means whale. However, the translators used neither one of these words. The translators decided to use the words katai megalo to describe the thing that swallowed Jonah. Megalo means mega or large, and katas refers to anything, any large sea creature, such as a large fish, whale, or sea monster. So the Hebrew says Jonah was swallowed by a large fish, but that could refer to a whale too, as they did not have a word for whale in the Hebrew language. While the Greek translation says he was swallowed by a large sea creature, leaving it open to being a large fish, whale, or sea monster. So I'm going to basically say, I don't know what he was swallowed by. I just know God sent some large fish or sea creature, monster, to swallow Jonah. Now the second question comes up all the time when talking about the story of Jonah, and that is, can a person really survive being swallowed by a whale or a sea creature? A lot of people say, no, that's not possible. Well, let's watch this video and find out if it's possible or not. Swimming with whales has been described as one of the most breathtaking experiences on Earth. And today, you get to try it out. As you get so close to the majestic beasts that you can almost pat them, you realize you've never felt this in touch with nature before. But then everything goes dark, and your body is tossed around aggressively. You've just been scooped up in a whale's mouth. You struggle to find your way out, but what are your chances against a 15-ton animal? Here's how to survive getting swallowed by a whale. Most people would tell you that being swallowed by a whale is an immediate death sentence, and they'd have good reason for it. But that doesn't mean that survival is impossible. Just ask Rainer Schiff. 
In 2007, he was gobbled up by a whale while taking pictures off South Africa's coast. He immediately held his breath until the whale promptly spit him back out. But what if you weren't released so quickly? How could you avoid being sliced up by the whale's teeth? Is there any way to survive the burning acids of its four stomachs? And when would be a bad time to make your escape? Here are some ways that you could get out alive. And if you watch the rest of it, there, he gives five things to do in order to survive being swallowed by a whale. But from this video, you can see that the scuba diver gets swallowed by a whale, and he survived. It also mentions, if you watch the whole video, it mentions another person who says he was swallowed by a whale and also survived. Several years ago, I heard a story about a Japanese fisherman on a Japanese fishing boat get tossed overboard and falls into the water and gets swallowed by a, either a shark or a whale. And the people on the boat follow this creature, and with their nets, they capture it, capture it, and 17 hours later, they pull him out of the stomach of this sea creature, and he's alive just with acid burns from the, from the stomach of the creature. So it is possible to survive being swallowed by a large sea creature. Although the odds are not in your favor, it is possible. So I believe the answer is yes. Yes, you can survive being swallowed by a whale or some other sea creature. But like I said, the odds aren't in your favor of surviving, but it is possible. And I personally believe, you know, God can do anything, right? So if he wants a large fish or a whale or a giant sea creature to swallow Jonah, God will make that happen. And if God wants Jonah to survive, then God will make sure that he survives inside the belly of that sea creature. He'll make sure Jonah has the oxygen that he needs to breathe. And I also believe this. If God can save Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the fiery furnace and keep them alive and unburnt, he can keep Jonah alive inside a stomach's, uh, the whale of a stomach and keep it protected from the acids of the, of the whale's stomach if he wants to. And what's interesting about Jonah is the prophet Jonah may have never performed a miracle but he was a walking miracle of God. He was the beneficiary of God's miraculous power and mercy. I'm actually starting to get a little ahead of myself in the story of Jonah. So let's get back to the story of Jonah. Last week, if you were with us, we ended with Jonah being thrown overboard and swallowed by a big fish. We're going to pick up the story from there and see what Jonah does while he's inside the belly of the sea creature. However, before we get into today's scripture passage, I want to ask one other question. And that is this. Who do you turn to when life gets tough? Who do you turn to when life gets tough? Many of us turn to family when life gets tough. You remember being a child, if you got hurt, who did you run to? You ran to mom or dad, right? <laughs> and they took care of you. Even as a grown man, when, I, when life gets frustrating and life gets tough, I find myself going to my wife and inventing my frustrations or sharing my problems or my struggles and, and seeking her wisdom and her counsel. I think many of us do that, right? With our spouses or, or with other family and loved ones. Other people, they turn to friends. I've seen teenagers turn to their friends for help. I've seen adults turn to their friends for aid and help. And, you know, things get rocky in the marriage. They need a place to stay. They go stay at a friend's house for a while. And, um, and that's good. When life gets depressing or frustrating, there's something comforting about going out to lunch with a friend and just being able to share with them what you're dealing with and, and for them to speak truth and love and encouragement into your life. I know others, they turn to the government when life gets tough. I've seen many people that are struggling financially and their electricity or their water or their gas bill, gas is about to get turned off or they're about to get evicted and, and they turn to government and government programs for help and aid. Or maybe you're that person who just says, I don't need anyone's help. And you don't turn to anybody. You think yourself strong and independent, you can solve it all, you can do it all. You don't need help, and you refuse to turn to others for help. So who do you turn to when life gets tough? 
Let's see who Jonah turns to when his life got tough. Let's pick up the story in Jonah chapter 2. I'm going to read verses 1 through 10 to you. It says this. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from inside the fish. He said, I cried out to the Lord in my great trouble, and he answered me. I called to you from the land of the dead, and Lord, you heard me. You threw me into the ocean depths, and I sank down to the hearts of the sea. The mighty waters engulfed me. I was buried beneath your wild and stormy waves. Then I said, O oh Lord, you have driven me from your presence, yet I will look once more toward your holy temple. I sank beneath the waves, and the waters closed over me. Seaweed wrapped itself around my head. I sank down to the very roots of the mountains. I was imprisoned in the earth, whose gates lock shut forever. But you, O Lord my God, snatched me from the jaws of death. As my life was slipping away, I remembered the Lord, and my earnest prayer went out to you in your holy temple. Those who worship false gods turn their backs on all, the, all God's mercies. But I will offer sacrifices to you with songs of praise, and I will fulfill all my vows. For my salvation comes from the Lord alone. Then the Lord ordered the fish to spit Jonah out onto the beach. So from Jonah chapter 2, we can see that when Jonah's life got tough, Jonah turned to God for help. We see Jonah inside the belly of the sea creature, and, and he's praying to God. Verse 1 says, Jonah prayed to God. Verse 2 says, Jonah cried out to the Lord in his great trouble, and the Lord answered him. In verse 7, it mentions Jonah's, Jonah's earnest prayers went to the Lord. And in verse 9, we see Jonah's prayer includes his promise to fil fulfill all his vows as a prophet. One of the vows a prophet makes is that he will go wherever God tells him to go and give the message that God tells him to give. Jonah wasn't doing that in chapter 1, was he? But he's saying, God, if you save me and you get me out of here, I will go. I will go and I will fulfill those vows. And we also see Jonah acknowledge that his salvation comes from the Lord alone. And it's interesting, after Jonah repents of his disobedience and promises to fulfill his vows as a prophet of God and acknowledges that his salvation comes from God alone, it is then that God has the sea creature spit him out onto a beach. So when Jonah's life got tough, Jonah turned to God for help. And when our lives get tough, I want to encourage us to do that too. Turn to God first. We tend to try to solve all our problems on our own, or we turn to family or friends or government, and then when we exhaust all of our options, we then turn to God for help and wisdom. And I want to tell us, encourage us, do the opposite of that. Turn that around and... and Turn to God first when you're struggling. When you're going through pain and problems, you don't know how, what to do or how to handle a situation, turn to God first. Seek his wisdom. Seek his strength. Seek, seek his help. And after you consult God, if you feel you still need some help or advice, or you feel God telling you to talk to others, then I suggest you turn to family and friends for wisdom, love, and support. But we need to get in the habit of turning to God first. To going to God and, and laying before him our problems, our struggles, our frustrations, all of it. Now I'm going to be honest with you right now. Our church is dealing with some financial struggles. I've been taking this problem to God on a regular basis. And I've been, been encouraging our leaders to take this problem to God as well. And we're trusting God to solve this problem for us, to help us get back on good financial grounds. We had to spend a lot of money, if you remember, several months ago to disaffiliate, and, and we drained a lot of funds, and so we're just struggling financially. I'm hoping that some people here and some people in the next service and others that are connected to this church will be part of that solution and, and, that, and, and solving this problem. But we are turning to God first 
seeking his wisdom, seeking his advice and how to handle this, this struggle. And I think it's the right thing to do. And I want to encourage you when you are struggling, when you are going through hard times, or you don't know how to handle something, turn to God and turn to him first. The next thing I want us to notice from this passage is the power of prayer. Jonah prays and God hears his prayer and God helps him. And I love how it says in verse 7, my earnest prayer went out to you. I want you to turn with me to the scriptures of James, James 5, 16. Where James, the half-brother of Jesus Christ, says this, the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. You know, Jonah overall was a righteous man. He was a man who loved God, who was a prophet. He served him faithfully up until he was told to go to Nineveh. He was a righteous person. And when he got swallowed by the fish or the sea creature, the whale, whatever it was, he turned to God and he prayed and prayed and prayed and he laid his heart out before the Lord and his earnest prayer went up to the Lord and the Lord heard it the Lord helped him, and good and wonderful things resulted from the prayers of a righteous man who's earnestly praying. There's power in prayer. The scriptures tell us that the earnest prayers of a righteous person produces great and wonderful results. So I want to encourage you to be a person of prayer. Prayer. To take time every day or multiple times a day talking to God, developing that close personal relationship with Him, sharing your frustrations, your problems, telling Him how much you love Him and are grateful and thankful for Him and the ways He's blessed you. Take time to confess your sins, repent of your sins. Acknowledge that He's your Savior and you look to Him for your salvation and help and aid. I also encourage you, as you pray, believe what you're praying for. Believe that God wants to help you, that he wants to help your neighbors, your friends, and the people you're praying for. And watch how, the prayer, how your prayers produce wonderful results in you and those around you. So after looking at Jonah 1 and 2, here's some biblical advice. When life gets tough, turn to God first. And when life gets tough, earnestly pray. Acknowledge your problems, repent of your sins, ask God to help you, and watch how your earnest prayers produce wonderful results. Those are the two things I think we can learn from Jonah chapter 2. When life gets tough, turn to God and earnestly pray. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we are grateful that you have given us this gift called prayer. That we can pray to you anywhere, at any time, and you hear our prayers. And as a loving father, you want to help. You want to help your children. We are your children, and you want to help us. So God, I pray that we would go to you first. Instead of trying to solve our problems with our own thoughts and in our own wisdom and in our own ways, I pray, God, we'd seek your wisdom in your way. And I pray, God, that we would take the time out of our busy schedules and to pray for ourselves, pray for our families, pray for our friends, pray for our church, our community, this world. Pray for the problems and struggles that are going on in this world and what we're dealing with as well. And may we believe in the power of prayer and believe in the power that is behind the prayers because we're praying to an, to an almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-good God. So may we believe you are hearing those prayers and that you want to answer those prayers and that you want to help. And may we sit back and watch how you move in wonderful and miraculous ways. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
During this part of our service, we worship God by receiving our offerings. There are different ways in this church that you can um, donate. One is the offering plate that's coming to you shortly. Another is our office. We're open between 8 and 1 o'clock, Monday through Friday. You can just walk it in. You can mail it in at 2950 Lakeview Avenue in St. Joseph. Or you can make arrangements with your um, financial institution to electronically give your money online. Malachi 3.10 tells us to bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. Now we're going to hear a lovely selection from Jim and Gabriel, and please, ushers, please come forth.
thank you, Gabriel, for blessing us with your awesome talent every week. And now please pray with me. Heavenly Father, all these gifts have come from you, and now we give a portion back to you. Please bless the givers and the gifts, and give us the wisdom to use these gifts in the best way possible. Bless us in all we do, so we will be a blessing to you. In Christ's name, amen. Now as we close out our service this morning, we're going to sing together, He Lives, page 310. We're going to sing verses 1 through 3. You may follow along in your hymnal or the screens in front of you. Well, once again, I want to say thank you for worshiping with us today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it has filled your heart with joy. I hope you've enjoyed hearing God's word spoken to your hearts today. And wasn't it good to know we serve a risen Savior, and he is in the world today. He is moving and acting. He's hopefully moving and acting in your life, in your family, in your friends, your workplace, this community, and all over the world. Now go in God's power, go in his grace, go in his truth sharing that goodness and that grace and that truth with as many people as you can, leaning on him to lead you and guide you. Go in his power and strength today and forevermore. 
Amen.